try to gather your mind together and bring it to the breath. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out. As for anything else, you can just let it pass, let it pass. Like someone who's trying to read a book. Other people may be talking around you or doing other things, but you want to focus on the, on the book. Don't let them disturb you. And as one of the Thai John said, don't you go disturbing them. In other words, the sounds out there may, may be distracting you and you get angry at the sounds. Well, the sounds are just doing their thing. You just say, I'm going to stay right here. They can do their thing, I'm going to do my thing. Remember that the sounds don't destroy your breath. The breath is always there, coming in, going out. It's just a matter of whether you're going to be with it or not. Just try to stay there continually, because it's being able to stay continually with something that allows us to see things clearly. If we're jumping around all the time, it's like walking in and out of a room during a TV show. You walk in and something's happening. You walk in five minutes later, something else is happening. You have no idea what happened in the meantime, what the connection is. If you want to see the connections between things, you have to stay with them. Well, like the old-fashioned record players with the needle on the, on, the, on the vinyl. If the needle was jumping around, all you got were incoherent sounds. It's when the ne needle stays in the groove that you know what's going on. Because we're trying to stay here in the present moment to watch our minds. So the breath is a good way to stay here because there's no past breath you can watch, no future breath you can watch. When you're with the breath, you're in the present. And then you can see clearly the machinations of the mind as it's creating thoughts. You see the thought as it comes. You see the point where you are deciding whether to go with it or not. And if you don't go with it, it'll fade away, and something else will come in its place. If you pay attention to something, you go riding with it, you've lost the breath. And you've also lost the present moment. You're in a different world. You can understand the workings of the mind as well when you're in those other worlds, as you can when you're right here in the present moment with the breath. Because after all, there's a lot to understand here, the way the mind engages with its senses it can make the difference between happiness and, and sorrow, pleasure and pain. So you want to be on top of it to watch what's happening. And the breath gives you a good place to do this, not only because it anchors you in the present moment, but also it can become a pleasant place to stay. You can adjust the breath so it feels good coming in, feels good going out. And when the mind is well rested like this, well nourished like this, it's like scientists working on a project. If the scientists are well paid, they're happy to do the project. If they're not well paid, they might start cheating. If the mind isn't well paid, in other words, it's not well nourished, it starts cheating on you, so you have to be careful. Give it a good, comfortable breath. Give it a good place to stay. And you'll find that you free yourself from a lot of unskillful thoughts that otherwise would have pulled you off. This way you're more in charge, which is how it should be. You should be in charge of your thoughts. You can't let them be in charge of you. You need to learn the skills that allow you to think what you want to think and don't think, not think what you don't want to think. And also get a good sense of values, what is worthy of thinking. That's what all the training is for. 